what Linda, she might have some of that in her briefcase, I think. I want y'all to follow along. Let me see. Let me see. Do I need to make some copies? Oh, she got some. No, I got mine. I, I'm gonna put them. Hey, hey, but Pilot got me. I, I think he's starting over there. But been it looking good. Yeah. Uh huh. Good morning. We're thankful that you tune in with us uh, as we do this podcast. Our podcast this morning is on why am I really saying I do? This is about the uh, fourth week we're doing this. We have about two more weeks. Uh, we're taking this lesson from Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 to 7. This is the seventh day of January 2024. We're thankful that God has allowed us to see another year, 2024. Our theme this year is striving to soar in 2004. Striving to soar in 2004. And so this morning, uh, we want to start out with a prayer for the Bear Power, then we'll uh, sing a song, song number 985, When the Morning Comes, When the Morning Comes for the Power. And let us pray. Oh, heavenly gracious Father, we thank your Lord for this day that you have blessed us with to see. We thank your Lord for the opportunity to come together to study your word, learn more of you, that it enable us to go out and teach others what does say the Lord. We pray, Lord, most all for your son, Jesus, who gave his life on the cross, that through his death, burial, and resurrection, we bring a hope to eternal life. We, those who are sick, those who are shut in, those who are going to travel in life, especially those who have lo lost loved ones, be a brother more he bring us to less than an hour, give him guide and direct him in this study that we all may be edified by it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. 985, 985, first and last stanza of 985. When the morning comes, when the morning comes. 985. Try us talk on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. I'm singing by and by, Lord, when the morning comes. I'm singing all the saints of God be gathering home, and we will tell of the soul. We have, we overcome, we will understand it better by and by. Temptation in the snare often take us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed for his thoughtless word of thee. And we wonder why the tears when we try to do our best. But we'll understand it better by and by. I'm singing by and by, Lord, when the morning comes. I'm singing all of the saints of God be gathering home, and we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Amen. As you turn the Bibles to Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6. Matthew 19, verses 4 through 6. Matthew 19, verses 4 through 6. As we've been discussing for the last few weeks, 
marriage is a, the covenant of God. It's a covenant with God and your spouse. Uh, contracts, you break in more ways than one, but uh, when you have a covenant, it's a different story. It's a covenant relationship with God. Amen. In Matthew chapter 19, beginning at verse number four, and he answered and said, and he answered and said unto them, have ye not read that he which made them from the, from the beginning has made them male and female? For the power of the might put his cross about. Have made them male and female and said for this call said a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall become one one flesh wherefore therefore uh, they are no more twain no more one uh, two but one they become one what therefore god has joined together let not man put asunder so we said that is so many reasons, so many reasons people want to get married. Uh, but the main reason should be that I truly love this person. And I, you can love someone, but there's st you still may not be ready to get married, you know, just because you love someone. Uh, both people must be prepared for marriage. So these are some of the reasons, and I started last week mentioning some of the reasons. Um, one reason, and we on, um, if you pull this up online, uh, we'll go to the second page, F, the man must also love his wife as he loves his own body. Ephesians chapter five, verses 28 through 29. Um, and so we see here, that Paul mentions that love that the man has have for his wife. So all men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hateth his own flesh, but nourish and cherish it, even as the Lord loved the church. That's a lot of love. The Lord loved the church so much he died for it. He gave his life for it. Now, I want to go to the third point where it says, this point is often made, no one is perfect, she is not perfect, neither am I. And that's true. You know, we said that all have sinned, Romans chapter 3, verse number 23, and come short of the glory of God. So no one is perfect, so you will not find a perfect person, but you can find a perfect person for you. Perfect person for you. You can find a perfect person for you. And so we, we see here that the word of God, when obeyed, can make us perfect or mature. This is what Paul is saying in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. You know, God's word is inspired. It's an inspired word of God. It's God breathed. And all scripture given by the inspiration of God in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16 through 17 and is profitable for what? Doctrine. The word of God is profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for instruct, for correction, for instruction in what? Righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be perfect. Here it means to be complete. Thoroughly furnished, furnished until what, what work? All good work. So you want to do good, just obey the gospel of Jesus Christ and go by God's word. Um, and the, the word of God, it perfects us. It, it perfects us. The, uh, God, Jesus, we're, we're perfected by the blood of Jesus Christ. When we sin, we uh, ask for forgiveness, and the blood of Christ washes away our sin. So it, it perfects us, uh, even though we're not perfect, but it, it makes, puts us back in a right relationship with God and also our fellow man. Now, the following are some reasons why people say I do. These are some of the reasons. Number one, it has been a long-term uh, investment, and I have too much to lose to turn back now. You know that song years ago, Brother Barry knows his song, Too Late to Turn Back Now. I believe, I believe, I believe I'm falling in love. Remember that one? <laughs> so oftentimes, 
<laughs> right, Brother John. <laughs> you do. <laughs> so, so oftentimes, you know, they just, you know, you feel like you've been in this relationship so long, and it's just, it's, it's just been a long period of time, and it's too late to turn back. Um, I cannot even begin to think of starting over again with someone else, and that's what people say. Um, but you, you, you can't think that way because um, you can get in a, you can be in another relationship that may not take that long to mature. Um, you know, sometimes we feel like we have to settle. That's the word we often use, settle. Well, I, I, need, I had to settle with this person. They know me and I know them and we've been through a lot. That's no basis to get married. It must be primarily built on love. Now, now this is my reply on that, on that reason. This is my reply. Go online, go online, Church Christ Atlanta Airport, uh, dot com, uh, Church Christ Atlanta Airport area dot com, then you, you'll see why am I reticent I do. You'll see a wedding cake and two people on top of that wedding cake. Just click on that and you'll get a copy of this. It's free. You can send it to your friends. Uh, do as you will. It's a wonderful study. Um, so this is my reply to that statement of it has been a long-term investment. Here's my reply. Do not worry about the investment. God can bless you beyond what you lost. God can bless you beyond what you lost. Um, and then we go to Job chapter 42. Remember Job 42 verse number 12. Job 42 verse number 12. This is what the Bible says in Job 42 verse number 12. After Job had lost everything, God, God blessed him with more than what he had initially. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 uh, donkeys. donkeys. And, uh, and, and the Bible shows us there that God can give you back more than you lost. So don't worry about losing time investing in a person. Um, and then the beauty of it, you find another person, a man to find for wife, find for good thing, uh, he finds another person uh, that has all the attributes that he needs. All the attributes he needs. You know, and main attribute is a person that loves the Lord. You find someone that loves the Lord more than you, and you have your wonderful mate. Amen. Love the Lord more than you. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 20. The Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. See, God is able to, to, to go beyond your thoughts and your imaginations. And so don't ever feel like you have invested so much, and it's too late to turn back now. You know, I, you know in uh, John chapter 2, remember the first recorded miracle of Jesus. Remember what it was? It was turning water to wine. Yes. And Jesus, of course, he had those men to fill up those water pots, uh, and then the, the water turned to wine. We don't know when the water turned to wine and the pouring in or going down in the bottom, but we know it turned to wine. <laughs> the water, he turned water to wine. And, and then this is what they said at the wedding feast. And it shows that it wasn't fermented wine because they had been drinking all night. You can't drink all night and still stand up. So it wasn't fermented, <laughs> fermented wine. They said, he has saved the best wine to the last, to the end. And I used to tell people when I work in the post office, ladies that uh, saying that, you know, they're up in age now and, and they don't know when they can find a mate and everything. I said, I said, just trust God, do the right thing, live right. And I said, sometimes God saves the best for last. Amen. He saved the best for last. Don't give up on God. God doesn't give up on us. Now, now notice this. The reason we have been living together for a while, this is another reason right here. This is reason number two, uh, uh, reason why people uh, say I do. Uh, we have been living together for a while, which is sinful. Amen. That's a sin. Amen. Remember in John chapter 4, Jesus uh, there with the woman as well, um, he, he said, where's your husband? And then and he says, you have five husbands, the one you're with now is not your husband. See, God knows everything. 
Uh, your, your, your family members may not know you're living together, but God knows. <laughs> Notice what I said. We, we have been living together for a while, and it does not look good. We get along fairly well, so marriage is a good option. Well, that's, that's still not a good reason, still not a good reason to get married, because you've been living together for a while. And I say to you, if you're living together, you hear my voice now, if you're living together, you need to get out as soon as possible. Get out as soon as possible, because you're living in sin. And if you die in your sin, Jesus says, where I am, you cannot come. We don't want to be caught in our sins. We don't, we don't, you know, you want to make sure you avoid every appearance. Remember we said Job, Job chapter 1, he avoided every appearance of evil. And some said, well, um, we just partners in, in this relationship. We live together, but, you know, we just partners. No wrongdoing. Well, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. That's, it doesn't look right, and you need to get out of that. And now this is, an, uh, this is my reply in reference to living together. Uh, living together does not only look bad, it is a sin. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're judging me. No, it's a sin. <laughs> and I, I want to give you a passage that um, sheds light on that. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. In Hebrews chapter 13, the writer said, it's so beautiful in verse number 1, let brotherly love continue. Lord, help us let that happen. Let brotherly love continue. Yeah. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for therefore some have entertained angels unaware. We see this in Genesis chapter 18, verse number 3 and following um, in, in uh, Abraham's situation, and entertain angels unaware. Uh, remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, as them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage, he says, in verse number four in Hebrews chapter 13, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. It's a wonderful thing to be married. It's honorable in all. But, he says, whoremongers and adulterers, God would judge. He would judge. So living together is not an option. It's not a, uh, an option at all. Some, well, it's not too bad of an option. Uh, it's, it's, it's the wrong option. Amen. And so uh, John chapter 4, verse 15 through 19, here goes, John 4, verse 15 through 19, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water, Jesus and the woman the well, that I thirst not, neither come hither to drink. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. See, God knows all about us. He knows our thoughts even before we think them. And that's why we need to make sure we actually have our hearts right. And so what comes out of our hearts, righteousness comes out rather than wrongdoing. Notice what it says. I have no husband. Jesus said to her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. Five. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saith thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. She changed the subject. <laughs> he said, Hey, uh, you're a prophet. <laughs> you know all about me. But you know, one thing about this woman that we don't talk about that much is that even though her life wasn't right, she was so excited, she had that excitement that we need, and this is my lesson this morning as we look at our lesson the sermon in Acts chapter 2, verse number 47, praising God, the early Christian word, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Now, she was so excited, the early church, they were so excited that they drew people to the kingdom, to the church. Sometimes we lose our excitement. And, and, you know, we're just going along, just going along. But Satan can take that excitement away, can he? You know, it could be anything can take our excitement. We must get our excitement back. And so she was excited. She goes in the city and says, Come see a man who has told me all the things about my life. The, the people, okay, even though she didn't live the best life in the world, her excitement 
encouraged them to come see that man, Jesus. And then they came to see him, and they realized, they, they looked at her and said, now we believe that he's the son of God. In other words, she brought him there. She brought him there uh, be, uh, on her excitement. Lord, help us to be more excited by the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us be more excited about Jesus. And they turned to her. And see, they gained their own faith. See, that was her faith and her, her excitement. But they gained their own excitement once they saw Jesus. Same when we bring people to the kingdom of God. We bring people to Jesus, not to preachers, not to members, anybody else. We bring them to Jesus. And when you bring them to Jesus, they gain their own excitement. They gain their own relationship when they're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I just sent out in our bulletin this morning that uh, we baptized five people in the last five weeks. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And um, But God is not through like we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 47. The Lord added to the church daily, search as you'll be saved. The Lord is still waiting for you under the sound of my voice. Uh, some of you have been listening to me for a long period of time, and, and I, I'm teaching the same thing every time you hear me. At the end of the lesson, I often give, present the invitation. The invitation, it is Jesus giving you the invitation. It is John, Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28. Jesus is coming to me. That's movement, right? You must come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. You must come to him. Some of it, well, uh, Jesus came to me at night and he told me this and told me that. No, he said, you come to him. <laughs> He's not far away from either one of us. Come to me. Come to me, all oh, that labor and a heavy laden and, a, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me from meek and lowly in heart. He wants you to come to him. And that's our invitation every Sunday. Every time I finish the podcast, that's our invitation to come to him. And, and, and so we see here, Upon a, a living together does not only look bad, it is a sin. Um, but they gained their own faith once they came to Jesus. Uh, Hebrew writer writes, uh, we read earlier, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Look at 1 Corinthians 7, verses number 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 through 5. First Corinthians 7, verses 1 through 5. Listen to what Paul says there. Now, concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, now it's a nevertheless, transition word. Yes. Nevertheless, to avoid what? Fornication. Let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Did y'all hear that word? Own, O, W, N? On, not anybody else. Have your own wife and your own husband. Leave everybody else's wife and husband alone. Let your husbands render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife has not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband has not power of his body. See, you become one, but the wife. Defraud, do not refrain yourself from one another, do not stay away from one another, he says in verse number five and following, in first Corinthians seven, defraud ye not one another, except it be what? With consent for a time. You know, you agree for a time that we're gonna separate. Yeah. You know, it's getting hot in here, we're gonna have to separate. <laughs> we're gonna have to separate. Now see, separation is not a sin, but while you separate it, you must still live faithful Amen. to your mate. Amen. Separation doesn't mean you, you separate and go out there and start dating someone else. Oh. No, he said, now, he said, defraud yourself not one for another except it be for consent for a time, for a time period. Now, he, he, you know how Satan works. Satan can come in between that relationship. Remember, the vows, let no man put asunder. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 through 6. Let, let no man come between you. You, you see, the, the two become one. You're joined together, right? Like these fingers. You're joined, joined together. And you, don't, you, don't, you need to not let anyone come between you. And, and listen to what he says about this, about Satan, though. Satan can, Satan can come between you. Defraud ye not the other, except it be for consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves, here goes now, 
to fasten and coming together again. Did you hear that? Fasten and coming together again. In other words, when you fast, and, and you m must be careful about this because if, if you uh, have health problems, for example, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, certain health problems, you can't fast. You can't fast. You know, you, you have to eat, take your medicine, and do the right thing. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1 and 5, Mount Hezekiah, uh, in order for him, God gave him 15 more years. He prayed, of course, and, and God uh, gave him a formula of medicine to take. He had to take the medicine. See, people don't want to take the medicine. <laughs> you have to take the medicine. I was talking to one of my friends, his wife refused to take a high blood pressure medicine mm. and uh, she wanted to take these supplements and uh, rather than do what the doctor told her to do. But sadly to say, it caused her to basically lose her sight mm. from a high blood pressure and, and now she's on dialysis. See, sometimes we can be so hard-headed and this includes me about our health. We can be so hard-headed and we pay the price down the road. And sometimes, Brother Barry, it, some things you can reverse, some things you can't. Right, Brother John? Yeah. Some things you can't reverse. Yeah. You know, one, once it get to a point, you can't reverse it. So what we need to do, Brenda, we need to, um, prior to that happening, we need to do the right thing. You need to eat right, exercise, and take the medicine, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> need to take the medicine. And, and, and we, have to, we have to preach that to our relatives and friends, don't we? Yeah. You know, especially to our parents and grandparents. Um, a lot of them, they don't want to take the medicine. They have old remedies and everything. And, uh, but we need to get checked up. We need to get checked out often. You know how often I, I get, uh, every, every four months, my doctor, uh, it's every three months, I think. Well, it's quick, every three months, <laughs> every quarter. <laughs> My doctor, he gives me a checkup. And then he, he tells me what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. I, I mentioned to y'all a few months ago, I, I went in and he, he gives me a hug every time I come in. He said, I'm going to take care of you, preach you, give me a hug. And I said, I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I gained weight, I've been eating, I've been eating cookies and ice cream. And <laughs> I had to get back. <laughs> Get back on track. We have to get back on track. Some of you are making New Year's resolutions, and, and you know, I'm told that you do good for the first month or so, and then you fall off the wagon. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to discipline ourselves and make sure we do the right thing? Health is very important. It's very important. You can't enjoy life if, if you know, if you don't take care of yourself. Uh, Howard Hughes. In the last few months of his life, he um, got very sick, and, um, and, and he, he was a person that really was afraid of germs, and you know how a lot of times when you get older, you have all these different things in your mind, and you start acting on things that is not, not even <laughs> significant, and then uh, he was a German phobic in, in a sense, and um, and uh, he had gotten sick and had all that money. And uh, they said, uh, Mr. Hughes, are you, what would you have changed? Um, would you have wanted the money or your health? He said, health. See, money can't buy everything. Money can't buy health. Y'all notice that? So we have to take care of our health. We have to take care of what God has given us. We, this is God's body, and this is, we are God's vessels, aren't we? We're God's vessels. Now, I want you to notice what he says. He says, he says uh, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence, on and on. And um, now that's one reason why uh, people feel like they need to get married because they've been together a long time and, and we're living together. No, you need to uh, make sure if you're not married to that person, move out, do the right thing. Now, another reason is my biological clock is ticking. In other words, I'm getting older, and there seems to be few prospects in sight or in my world. 
Now, now my reply is, trust God that he will supply all your need. Didn't God say that? Didn't, didn't we see that in the Bible in Ephesians chapter 4? Look at Ephesians, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19. Philippians 4, verse number 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And some people just equate that to financial. They equate that to financial. You know, it, it, it's, he, the Bible says A-L-L, -L, all. God knows our needs. He knows our needs. And if we stay right with God, God will, listen to what Paul says here in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And God is rich. He owns everything. Psalm 24, verse number 1, the earth is the Lord and full is thereof, and they that dwell in it. Everything belongs to God. And if God wants me to have it and I'm living right, God would take care of me. And like the Hebrew boy said, if he doesn't, it's still all right. Because <laughs> I trust him to do the best for me anyway. And so in Proverbs chapter 3, look at Proverbs 3, verses 3 through 6. Proverbs 3, verses 3 through 6. Here it goes. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart so that thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Now that's important because we're going to talk about how Jesus this morning, in Luke 2, verse number 52, he grew in wisdom and knowledge and favor with God and man. And in other words, um, you can't not have this great relationship with God and treating God's people in a kind of way. Can't do that. I love God, but those people over there, you know, no. You can't do that. See, a broken relationship with God is a broken relationship with your fellow man. That's why he says, you know, you bring a gift to the altar, he said, leave that gift at, at the altar and make it right with your brother. Because you have a broken relationship. You're, you're up in here, uh, Praising the Lord and worshiping me, but you don't have you, you have a broken relationship with your fellow man. You know, Ten Commandments talk about this a lot. Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 and following, where it has the first four commandments, man relationship with God. The first four commandments, man relationship with God. And the next six commandments is man, God's relation, man's relationship with his fellow man. So that's ten, right? Ten commandments. So the first four. You know, you, you can't break those, that, your, your relationship with God. And then the next six, love thy mother and father, your days be long on this earth, do not steal, do not kill, love them, on and on. If you break either one of those, listen to what James said, James chapter 2, verse number 6. He says, verse number 6 through 10, he said, if you break one of these commandments, you're guilty of what? You're guilty of them all. You know, remember that in John, Matthew chapter 19, um, Verses um, 12 and following, remember the rich young ruler, uh, Jesus tells him, um, he said, what can I do to inherit eternal life? See, Jesus had not died on the cross at that point, so he didn't say, hear, believe, uh, confess, hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. He didn't say that because Jesus had not died on the cross. This is John 19. Jesus dies on the cross, you know, later on in Matthew 26 and 27, on and on, but um, so what did he tell him? He was still up on the law. He said, he said you, you, you need to obey the law. And then, you know, little mother follow him. He said, I have kept that from my youth up. He said, so what lack I yet? Now, see, I want you to know that God knows what we lack. He does. He said, what lack I yet? And then he says, what I need you to do, I need you. Here's a rich man. He said, I need you to take, take your riches, go sell them, sell your riches. Now, see, see he had to do more than one thing. Uh, go sell them, take those proceeds, give to the poor, and then once you give it to the poor, once, you, once you're on welfare, then you come follow me. <laughs> then you come and follow. See, Jesus knew his heart. Jesus knew what he needed to do. He knows what I need to do. He knows what you need to do. And a lot of times we know what we need to do, right? It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. We know what we need to do to make it right with God. And so he, he knew. Now, I want you to notice here. So uh, my biological clock is ticking, ticking, 
In Proverbs 3, verse 1, 3 through 6, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, write them upon the tablets of thine heart, so shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. The sight of God and man. That's it, right? The sight of God and man. Jesus said, at least one that you did unto, you did unto me, Matthew chapter 25. Lord, we didn't see you when you're hungry and, and naked and and we you know without clothing, and, you know, in, in proper clothing, what he's talking about, in prison and sick. We didn't see you like that. And Jesus said, yes, you did. He said, the least one that you did unto, you did unto me. In other words, anybody that's, that's facing you, you're looking through the eyes of that person, you're looking at me. Because they are made in my image. That's a soul. And, and, and you're not to mistreat not one of my, one, one of my people, not one. Matter of fact, even uh, believers, remember in Matthew 10, if uh, they were to give those people that were uh, evangelizing on a mission trip a, a cup of water, he said, you will not lose your reward. It's, it's, it's wonderful when people are kind to one another. Don't y'all agree? Yes. I was talking, we were talking to a customer. His daughter is on dialysis, and, 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 and I've experienced that with family members pushing the wheelchair in the dialysis clinic and uh, and sometimes if a person just gets up and open that door for you that means so much that means so much you know it's just that little small those little kind gestures right mean so much don't they and then and then just just someone saying thank you and I appreciate you that goes a long way and and that's what Paul says first verse Thessalonians chapter 5 verse number 17 and following Paul says all things in all ways give thanks give thanks and be thankful i want you to notice what it says it says um trust in god um this is sister owen's favorite passage of scripture proverbs 3 verse 3 through 6 right sister owen's uh trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall what direct thy path See, even though your, heart, your biological clock is ticking, you're getting older, and uh, you feel like there seems to be no prospects for you, God is able. He's able. And, and today we have this technology, and um, yeah, all kind of dating apps and everything else. And I know some people, oh, I'm not getting on that, I'm not getting on that. Uh, you know, you must be making adjustments with the times, you know. Um, and, you know, if you want to do it old-fashioned way, that's fine. It's just, just hard sometimes to find people the old-fashioned way. And y'all know what the old-fashioned way is, don't you? Uh, you know, when, when you're younger, meeting people in high school, meeting people in college, and then you meet people on the job, and then all of a sudden, uh, your friend introduced you to somebody that really not a match for you. You're watching, you know. <laughs> your cousins. Call you, oh, I got the right person for you. You don't want to disappoint them. Uh, <laughs> but we have to make sure that we're right, first of all. We might, right, must make sure that we're right with God, we're doing the right thing, and God will do the rest if we let him. So sometimes uh, saves the best, sometimes God saves the best for last. I mentioned this earlier in John chapter 2, verse number 8 through 10. He said, the best uh, wine for last, learn to wait on God, you'll see it on the sheet, and he will renew your strength. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31. I mentioned this New Year's night. Uh, listen to what it says, Isaiah 40, verses 28 through 31. And, and wait on God doesn't mean you just wait around and do nothing, but it means trust in God. Do, live your best life you can, and, uh, and you lift Christ up, and he'll, you'll draw all men to him. Has thou not known, has thou, Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. We serve a God that has never been sick and never will be sick. There always be and there always will be. You can always trust him. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And the Bible says, not only does he not grow weary, uh, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. Yes. Remember, Paul says, be weary, but 
faint not, you know, um, don't faint, don't give up. He give power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. You know, even young people get discouraged. But, but God, but God, but God would take care of the situation. And so we want to go to um, number, um, we'll be going to number five shortly. Uh, we have about five more minutes. Um, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Those that wait on the Lord, God will renew your strength. So don't get discouraged. You feel like it's too late for you to find someone. Just never know how, how God works. But you just keep yourself ready. You just stay ready. Just stay ready. Okay, here's a re another reason. I have a low self-esteem. I feel as though I would not find anyone better than the person I am presently dating. Well, it's hard to find someone when you're dating someone. <laughs> That's a hard situation. <laughs> someone has to move out of the way. <laughs> Now, now this is my reply to that. You must learn to love yourself as well as forgive yourself. Amen. You must learn to love yourself as well as forgive yourself. Love God all the soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love who? Yourself. Learn to love yourself. Do not marry at the level of your self-esteem, but marry at, the, at your self-worth. Okay, you got self-esteem, got self-worth. Don't marry at your level of self-esteem, but marry at, at your self-worth. You know, they tell you all the time, don't go shopping for groceries if you're hungry. <laughs> Eat before you go. <laughs> because <laughs> while you're shopping, you're going to be shopping off of impulse because <laughs> you're hungry. Well, I can't wait to get this in the kitchen. I can't wait to get <laughs> But don't go in there hungry. <laughs> <laughs> same, same with dating, same way. You must, you must make sure that you have yourself together and you're not in a hurry. You can't do it off of low self-esteem. So you must learn to love yourself as well as forgive yourself. Do not marry at low, at a level of self-esteem, uh, at your self-esteem, but you're married at your self-worth. You're worth a lot. You're worth a lot. And, and you, need, you need to realize that. You're special, unique in God's image. You are. Don't just settle for anybody. You are worth the world to God. You're worth the world to God. God really loves you. You are made in his image. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 27. Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own what? In his own image. And in the image of God created he, him, Male and female created he them. You are special according to uh, Psalm 139, verse 14. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. God loves you. You're special, and you're, you're unique, and don't let anyone try to pull you down and try to, and you know, I, I know people in certain relationships, uh, the man would say to his woman, to the, to the woman, you might always stay with me, don't nobody want you. Don't nobody want you. You hear that a lot. You hear that a lot. Don't, might always stay with me. You know, just trying to pull a person's self-esteem down. And, and, and that, that should not be the case. Let me give you eight things and we're going to be closing. Let me give you eight things. We got one minute. I'm going to give you eight things and we'll, we, will, we will cash in on these eight things next week, but I, I'm going to give them to you so you can study these for next week. Eight things to consider prior to getting married. Here are eight things to consider before you get married. We'll go one by one next week. Do I love this person enough to spend the rest of my life with them? Do I love this person enough to spend the rest of my life with them? Okay, the answer needs to be yes. And it, it should not be no, and it should not be not sure. Now, now, keep in mind now, notice what I said. Now, do I love this person enough 
to spend the rest of my life with them. That's a lot of love. You know, you can, you can love a person and say, well, I'm, I'm not really ready to spend the rest of my life with this person. My love doesn't go that far. If it doesn't go that far, you don't, you don't need to marry. Now, now, now here, here's the second one. How many children do we plan on having, if any, do we both agree on when and how many children we're planning on having? You know, some people come from large families, they want a large family, some people in a small family, and the wife might want five children, the man might want one. You're you going to have to work that out. Uh, There's going to be some problems up in here, right? Amen. <laughs> Number three, what are the spending and saving habits of both persons? Also, who would be the primary financial person? Spending and saving habits are so important. Do you not know one of the number one reasons people get a divorce is because of financial money. money? And then keep in mind, it's not necessarily not having enough money or having too much. It's just how we're going to, right, John? How we're going to spend it. How we gonna, whether or not we're going to save this and whether or not we're going to spend this. And, yeah, and she could be one that uh, loves to save. And he could be one love to spend or vice versa. Um, and then you have to also analyze, let's say you got aging parents um, and they, they need financial help. You must be on one accord, that's why you must be one. You must be on one accord on how much you're gonna help them with or whatever, because that's, that's important. They are important, right? You might have a spouse that say, well, uh, we just not gonna spend that on our aging parents, we're going on a, we're going on a vacation this week. <laughs> What's more important? What's more, what more important? So you must be on one accord. Look, now, now look at the next one, the fourth one. What are the career goals of each partner? Will these goals have a strain on our relationship or, grow, or growing and glowing together? Will we grow and glow together uh, with our career have a strain on our relationship? That's important because if the husband has certain hours that he works and the wife, has, you know, they're missing each other like a ship going by each other in the night, um, that could have a strain on your relationship. You know, it, it really can. I, I mentioned I was in the military um, in Germany and, and I had a choice. I had a choice to uh, go there for three years and take my family or two years and not take my family. I chose to take my family because I wanted them to grow with me. I, I didn't want my career to uh, separate us like that. And not too many marriages can take that. I had some friends to do that and they wanted a short tour for two years instead of three. And some of them, when they went back home, they didn't grow together and, and things didn't work out that good. So. Uh, it, we have to think about the marriage first. See, sometimes, I want y'all to think about this now, sometimes we sacrifice our marriage on the altar of success. Y'all know what I'm saying when I say that? Sometimes we sacrifice our marriage on the altar of success. You know, we're trying to um, make the money, do this and do that, and, but we don't put our marriage first as a priority. Yeah, keeping up with the Joneses. And, and, and Brother John, I, I tell people all the time, you have to be careful about keeping up with the Joneses because you don't realize the Joneses keep refinancing. Yeah. And, and then the Joneses, <laughs> and then another thing about the Joneses, you know what? They have better credit. They have better credit. So you can't keep up with the Joneses. For now. <laughs> For now. That's right. <laughs> can't keep up with the Joneses. Just do what you need to do in your financial situation. Now we have eight more. We have uh, four more and we'll be closing. What would be the Sexual adjustment for each partner, we'll talk about that next week. What about my religion as well as my partner's religion? Do we share the same faith? That's important. You know, Paul says uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we'll talk about it next week. He said, when you marry, marry only in the Lord. He tell the widow, right, to marry only in the Lord. And so you want to make sure you have the same faith. This is seven. Seven, what about our in-laws? We are... We, uh, are we really leaving and cleaving according to Genesis 2, 24? Because sometimes we don't leave our mother and father like we should and cleave to one another. And sometimes our in-laws can be outlaws. We don't want our in-laws, Brother Barry, to become outlaws. 
Marvin Law, that's the old song, yeah. Marvin Law. Uh, <laughs> John saw some of them. Number eight. Here's number eight. What about our peers? Will we consider associating with married couples more than our former single friends? That's important. That is important. Because when you become, when you are married, uh, you need to stick around married couples. You can't, you can't go back to your old single friends. It's okay to have lunch with them, eat whatever. Don't get me wrong, but you must be careful to make sure you stay with uh, the married couples because that's the environment you're in now, and that's where you're going to grow in. And you don't want any single person to pull you away from your spouse. At this time, you have heard the word of God, believe it all in your heart, repent of your sin, confess Christ, and be baptized. If you're not married, you don't need to be married uh, here to go to heaven, uh, but you need to be married to Christ in that you are baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, and so I want you to know this morning that in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus says there will be no marriage in heaven anyway. <laughs> All will be fulfilled. Marriage is only to be joy here on earth. But the power leads him to close in prayer. Let us pray. I have a great thought. We thank you, Lord, for the lesson that was spoken. Uh, Minister Moore, we pray a lot of the things we have learned about marriage that we continue to uh, listen and, and dwell on it, the importance of it, uh, that we will always be together as one, as you have put it. We pray a lot concerning consider be us and God and direct us by the Holy Spirit that keep us from the temptation of Satan. Pray a lot be with us, guide us, and bring us back at the next point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Stay tuned at 10 o'clock as we deal with, in Acts chapter 2, verse number 47, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as shall be saved. Please stay with us. Don't, don't go away. Stay with us uh, with, in just the next few minutes, presenting the worship service and that lesson of the hour. God bless you all.